ask if there are any visitors among us, would you please stand? I know we have all family here. Any visitors among us, would you please stand? Any visitors among us, would you please stand? Amen. Now we're going to do a what we call a pew check. We want to see who came the first. So we're going to start with the north first. So if you came from, let's say, Richmond, stand up. Amen. 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 Keep on standing. If you came from, uh, let's say, Alexandria, Virginia, would you stand? If you came from D.C., would you stand? If you came from Maryland, would you stand? If you came from Philadelphia or Delaware, would you please stand? If you came from the great city of New York, would you please stand? If you came from Buffalo, New York, would you please stand? <laughs> Amen. Now let's go to the south now. Ohio. Ohio. Okay. I'm going to go up that way. If you came from Ohio, would you please stand? Amen. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Illinois. Amen. Can we go down south now? All right. Let's go down south. If you came from, let's say, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky? Kentucky, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. How about if you came from North Carolina? South Carolina? Georgia? Alabama? Florida? Amen, amen. Let's give our, our travelers some love. Now, if you, can, if you serve in these United States, you came to see your family, would you please stand? Amen. Amen. Let's give that our soldiers some love. Amen. 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 This is your welcome. Uh, uh, Memorial Georgia is saying, so happy to have you. So happy to have you. Please, please come again. Please, please come again. Let's give our soldiers uh, some love. Then we have our announcements from our church clerk. Let's give her some love as she comes. Dear God, to the Spirit of Christ this morning on this blessed Christmas morning. Amen. Truly, we are indeed happy to have each of you here with us. The announcements that I will have to share with you one is. Uh, from the Mount Level Baptist Church over in Church Road, Virginia. And uh, the diaconate program there will be on January the 15th, 2 p.m. And the Church of Lamar has been invited to be a part of that program to sit in with them on that program. Pastor Leroy Evans of the Union Baptist, Union Grant Baptist Church Spring Grove will deliver the celebratory message. Amen. Again, this is on January 15th. 2023 2 p.m. Reverend Michael Spradley is the pastor, Deacon John Bottoms. Thank you. Just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate everything you've done. It really meant a lot, Deacon Lemon Harris. Amen. And I'd like to greet my friend that was invited this morning, Deacon Mary Harvey. Amen. Those are all the announcements. Truly, I hope that each of you will enjoy the day. Amen. 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 Well, we thank you all, all of those who are visiting, all those who are watching way back, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. As you all know, this is going to be a, an abbreviated service on the day because we want uh, everyone to be in fellowship uh, with their families uh, during this uh, special time of year. Uh, so we thank you all for coming in on today. Turn to your neighbor, to your, to your left and right, and look him in the eye and say, you sure look good today. Sure look good today. Indeed, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We ask that you would bless the Lord and give back a portion of that what the Lord has given unto you. Amen. Let's give these men some love. As we 
we all stand? Suddenly, a great company of 
the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those who, whom his favor rests on. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told about us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the, and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had happened and told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what had what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all this, these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Let us pray our hearts for the preached word. Let's give these men some love as they come in.
Lord. Is anybody glad that we celebrate Christmas on today? Is anybody glad that the Savior has come? If you're glad, it's no time. The Lord has given the Lord a hand up away. We're going to thank the Lord for improving us. Thank the Lord for coming for us. Thank the Lord for delivering us. Thank the Lord for saving us. Thank the Lord for being born. We say happy birthday, Have you ever been to Harry before? Yeah, right. 
Many times we hear it because we haven't prepared ourselves. Amen. We tend to speed because we haven't prepared ourselves Amen. for what it is that we're doing. And we get in a rush at times because you know the planning hadn't been done properly. All right. Uh, something that gets up under my fingernails every now and then is because it, 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 you know when you have to go somewhere, you need to be there at a certain time. Why are you leaving out at the time that it's not going to get you there in time? Though? Amen. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about nobody in particular. But if you have to be somewhere at a certain time, if you have to do something at a certain time, if you have to uh, be at an event at a certain time, uh, and you find yourself hurrying, it's because maybe you didn't prepare. Amen. And you may say, well, there was traffic. But you have to prepare for traffic. That's right. You know, uh, you may say that, you know, I couldn't find my keys, but you have to prepare to get your keys. Amen. Uh, you may say that uh, someone slowed, someone else slowed me there. Well, maybe you should have left them at home. Amen. Uh, so, you know, all depends on what you're doing. Sometimes we need to be in a hurry, especially when we're serving God. Amen. Uh, you've been in a hurry to do something. You've been in a hurry to see something. You've been in a hurry to see something. And when you fail to plan, then you, then you plan to fail. Amen. But uh, other times we hurry because we are excited. Many times we are excited about what's to take place. All right. Uh, what's to happen because you get in a hurry because you want to hurry up and get there. You don't want to miss a seat, especially if it's a, something that's being showed or something you have to go view. You want to get in the front part of the seat. I tell my wife many times when we go places, I don't sit at the back of nothing. You know, I always try to sit in the front. You know, because so many people have sacrificed their lives so that we can sit in the front of things. Amen. So when you come into the study, and I know in church, church typically uh, fills up from the back then to the front. But I like to sit in the front because I want to be in the midst of the crowd. I want to be right there in the front. You all know that anointing falls from the front from the front. And all the way down to the back. So, you know, not picking on nobody who like to sit in the back. Because sometimes you have to slip out. And you have to make yourself, you don't want to be seen a lot of times. So you sit in the back. But I like to be in the front of things. Not to be seen or anything like that. But I want to hear everything that has been seen. So sometimes we are in a hurry because we are excited of what's to take place. We get excited about certain major events in our lives. Like a new promotion on your job, like your birthday, like today is Jesus' birthday. We're Amen. kind of excited. This is a special day. I'm glad that we weren't like some other churches, and I'm not picking on them. They have to do what's right for their congregation. But some churches even counsel today. They had their services on yesterday, and that's fine. But I, there's something about coming to church on Sunday. Amen. Something about being in the Noah's house on a Sunday uh, makes the difference to me. Uh, we get excited about major events like birthdays, like your anniversary, like graduation, like new jobs, like new assignments. But is anybody excited about hearing the word of God? All right. It's about hearing the word of God. Every time I tiptoe through these doors, I get excited about what the Lord is going to say to us. Amen. I get excited whenever someone utters a prayer, whenever someone gives an encouraging word in the name of Jesus. Amen. I get excited. Because God's presence is around us. Because of the essence of God. Because of the promise that God has put on our lives. I get excited. Amen. Uh, I will make, uh, we get ourselves in a hurry when it comes to serving the Lord. Because God has done so many great things for us in our yes, lives. Yes. God has opened so many doors in our lives. Yes. God has saved our souls. God has delivered us. And so for that, we ought to give him praise. All right. For that, we ought to thank you. God has done so many great things. Right. Look at you sitting beside your loved ones. I see uh, uh, sons and, and I see uh, uh, mothers and everybody sitting together. Amen. People have come as far as uh, Ohio and New York and places, uh, even right, right around here, Colorado. We have people coming from all over just for this special day. Jesus is the only one who can bring all these people together. Amen. I understand when we have stuff for grandma and granddaddy and somebody may not can come, 
But some of old Christmas, everybody finds a way on their on their docket to get there. Amen. So if we're going to be in a hurry, we need to be in a hurry to see Jesus. Uh -huh. We need to be in a hurry to hear Jesus. Right. And we need to be in a hurry to tell about Jesus. Right. Some in the generation, we're not going to be long to see Jesus, to hear Jesus, and to tell about Jesus. Let's get in a hurry. The time has come that the baby would be born in Bethlehem. Caesar Augustus issues a decree. A decree is a order. That means you must obey it. There's no option in the decree when Caesar Augustus uh, issued this decree. That a census would be taking place. The people will report to uh, a certain area to give account of how many people are in their homes. You all know probably about a year or two ago, we had a census that was going around all throughout the nation. And a census, this is, uh, a census is not new. Now, you know, we do it for federal aid and federal money right now, but this census right here was taken to see all who was accounted about the Romans. They wanted everyone in the household to be accounted. The people will report to their native land. Uh, so Joseph and Mary went to the home of Bethlehem because uh, he was in the lineage of David. Yes, he was related to David the king. They had to travel about 100 miles on donkey to get to their destination. And she was nine months pregnant and had to travel almost 100 miles. Can you imagine being on a donkey and traveling all that time? Brothers, we, we don't know about that, but I know some sisters know about that. She's in the next month. She's geared to give birth, and she has to travel because of this census. She couldn't be like, well, no, I don't feel well, and uh, you can go speak for me. Uh, she couldn't be like, well, no, I'm geared to have a baby. No, she had to go with him, and she was pregnant. Can you imagine being uh, nine months pregnant and riding, hitting those bumps, hitting those waves, everything jumping you? Because you know riding on a donkey is not easy. I know we got some uh, brothers who are over riding horses and things like that. That's not a, a fun ride out there. You know, it's fun to look at you, look at the animals, but to be on a donkey riding almost 100 miles. The baby is coming when they uh, get to Bethlehem. You know the story. Uh, there was no room for them in the inn. That means there was no room for them to stay in. Uh, there was no room. There was no. Uh, there was no bread and breakfast. There was no uh, Marriott. There was no Hyatt. There was nothing of that sort. All the rooms were taken up because of the census report. Everybody was in town, and I know typically around about October, uh, when you go during Virginia State homecoming, there's no rooms. You can, all the rooms are sold out from down in Emporia all the way up to Richmond because of the homecoming. It's hard to find a room, so you got to kind of put your, your mind in their, in their set. Uh, just think about going to a major event, and there's only a few hotel rooms, and you don't know anybody. And then all of a sudden, you don't have anywhere to stay. But then the innkeeper ends up and saying, well, I have a stable you can stay in. I have a barn that you can go and stay in, where the animals stay. Because back then, uh, sometimes the animals, they would bring the animals into the house, but they stayed on the upper part, and the animals stayed there. But you can go down there and stay down there with the sheep and uh, with the goats and things, that, with the pigs. You can stay down there. We got a little place down there for you to stay. Just make you a little spot down there. You'll be out of the weather, and you can come there. And a lot of times, the innkeeper, he gets a bad name, you know? But he didn't have no, no space for them. He didn't have anywhere for them to go. Amen. And many times in our life, we feel like we don't have anywhere to go. We feel like we don't have uh, anything, uh, that, 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 that we don't have anywhere to go. We, we feel like that we uh, are lost. We don't have anywhere to go. But any time that you fall on your knees and you ask God, God will give you direction. All right. It may not be what you want it to be, but as right. long as God tell you what it is, it is what God wants it for you. Can I be a witness? Amen. Amen. The stable had animals in there. It was a barn that had animals in it. And Mary gives birth to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. She gives birth to the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. She wraps him in cloths, but I like the King James version of the Bible. It said she wraps him in swaddling cloths. 
Isn't it ironic that Jesus, when he's born, he's wrapped in swaddling cloths. But then when he goes on a hill called Calvary, he'll be wrapped again. He'll be wrapped so he can go into a borrowed tomb for his death. Swaddling cloths back then were used for animals that would die during that time or for bandages for the animals. That's why they had swaddling cloths there. Theologians have said these cloths were used for animals and they wrapped Jesus, our Messiah, in these swaddling cloths. Can you imagine that? Being wrapped in your birth, but also being wrapped at your death. Don't, get the, uh, don't miss the irony in this text. And then Jesus is burrowing. He will be placed in a, 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 a manger, as you all know. He's wrapped to be born, but also he'll be wrapped later on to death. Wow. Meanwhile, an angel of the Lord appears to the shepherds, tending the flock. He appears to the shepherds, tending to the flock. And what does he say? They are shocked. They are shaken up. He tells them, do not be afraid. And uh, through all of this text, everybody has been told, do not be afraid. Zachariah has been told, do not be afraid. Mary has been told, do not be afraid. And then Joseph has been told, do not be afraid. And then here it is, these shepherds. Now shepherds was like a lonely job back then. Nobody really wanted to be a shepherd during that time. But shepherds, but it was an honorable occupation. Amen. It was, I can imagine, it was at night, and then uh, the, the angel comes to them and tells them, do not be afraid. And I don't care what it is, whatever it is that you're going through, the Lord is telling you, do not be afraid. All right. Whatever your minority may be, do not be afraid. All right. Whatever door that you must walk through, do not be afraid. All right. Whatever that sickness is, do not be afraid. Right. Whatever, whoever left you and you think you got to do things by yourself, do not be afraid. Because right. God is with you. Greater right. is he that's within you than he that's within the world. All right. Amen. 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 The angel prays to them and tells them, do not be afraid. A savior will be born and we are, uh, and a sign will be given. And then he tells them about all about Jesus being uh, coming and where they will be. And these are many angels. Then they talk to the, the many shepherds and the host comes. And they celebrate and they glorify God. Then a great company of heavenly hosts appear, raising, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens on earth. Glory. Peace to those who the Lord has favor upon. When the angel left, the shepherds said to one to another, uh, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing, yeah. which the Lord has told them. Uh, so they was in a hurry. And, and they went, and they went. They dropped everything they was doing. You know how they do. They, they was in a hurry. And, they, and if there's any other time to be in a hurry, it needs to be in a hurry when it comes time to see Jesus. That's right. You can be in a hurry to get to your job, and that's fine. You can be in a hurry to get to school, and that's fine. You can be in a hurry to eat supper later on this evening, and that's fine. But any time you want to come into the presence of God, you need to be in a hurry right. to get into His presence, to feel His power. So the first point is, let's hurry to see Jesus. In verse 16, the A, the a portion it says, so they hurry on. That's enough. These shepherds were told by the angel, uh, just, uh, just like uh, Zachariah was told, just like Mary told, just like Joseph was told, don't be afraid. So we shouldn't be afraid of what's going on in our lives as long as Jesus is with us. Amen. The announcement to them by the angel made them want to see Jesus. They were excited to see Jesus. They were excited to see this promise that was made many, many years ago. They were excited, but they were eager, and they were ecstatic. And any time we go to see Jesus, we should be excited about coming into the house of the Lord. Right. We should be excited about hearing the word of God. Right. We should be excited about hearing the prayers of God. We should be excited about reading the word of God. Is anybody excited today? Because of the prayers he's answered, are you excited? Because of the ways he's made in your life, are you excited? Right. Because of the doors that he's opened, are you excited? Right. When we come to Jesus, we should be eager. There should be no type of eagerness in your body. You should be eager about being in the house of the Lord. 
I know it's just four walls, but anytime you come into this house, it's just something about being in this house. Yeah. We should be eager about being in the house of the Lord. Right. And I know many times, some of us, only time we come to church is Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Mm -hmm. And that's fine for some of you all. Yeah. But you should be eager about getting in the house of the Lord. All right. We as parents, uh, we teach our kids, you know, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves. I mean, go to church. Right. Even if you don't come to this church, Amen. go to church. Find your church for those who are living in New York, who's living in Ohio, who's living find your church. You know you when, when when it's time to come here to, for Easter and Mother's Day, we know you're gonna be here. But wherever you are in Maryland, find you a church. All right. Amen. I know one thing about this pandemic, it has broadened our horizon. And many people like to be on bad side balance. But it's nothing like coming into the presence of God. All right. it's, not, it's nothing like coming into the storehouse of the Lord. All right. To give, to have fellowship with one another. So we need to be eager. We need to be excited. We need to be uh, have enthusiastic about being in the presence of the Lord. All right. When we come in, we should be eager about his presence. We should be eager about uh, seeing Jesus the Christ. God has blessed us so many ways in our lives. God has opened so many doors for us. We should be excited about what the Lord has done in our lives. Can I get a witness? Amen. But when we see Jesus, and no man can see Jesus and live, but we see Jesus many times in our lives. When he woke you up this morning, you saw Jesus. All right. When he started you on your way, you saw Jesus. All right. Clothes on your back, we saw Jesus. When you rolled down this road and you didn't get in an accident, you saw Jesus. All right. Food on your table today, you gonna see Jesus. Uh, presence up under the tree, you gonna see Jesus. All right. Everything that you got that's good and perfect comes from above. All right. And you see Jesus every single day. We see Jesus when we wake up in the morning, yes. When he healed our body, we see Jesus. I say when he healed your body, you right. see Jesus. Amen. When he saved your marriage, you see Jesus. All right. When he delivered us, we see Jesus. We need to be eager, we need to be ecstatic about seeing the Lord. Amen. So let's be in a hurry to see Jesus. But secondly, let's be in a hurry to hear from Jesus. All right. The angel premonition was true. The promise was realized. The pre-told account was seen. That meant that everything that the angel said happened. Uh, that the city in the city of David, the Messiah would be born and this would cause great joy. That's what the angel said. And Jesus is only a baby and has not said nothing, but it caused great joy. Jesus has not even uttered a word other than crying, probably in the manger, but it caused great joy. Right. He is the Messiah. It would cause great joy. And when we hear the word of God, when we read the fleshly tablets of God, it will cause joy in your heart. Right. The Lord will uh, put joy in your heart when you hear his word. Something about reading the scriptures will cause joy in your heart. Right. There's something about hearing the word of God that puts joy in your soul. When you hear the word of God, it will put clapping in your hand right. when there's no song going on. When you hear the word of God, it will put joy in your heart when everything is going on wrong. When you hear the word of God, it puts soothing in your soul, yeah. even when no heaven yeah. is going up. God will put joy in your heart. All right. There's something about hearing the word of God that makes everything all right. Yeah. Not man, not me, not the deacon, but the word of God. Yeah. The word of God will direct you. I say the word of God, it will direct you. Right. The word of God, it will comfort you. That's the right. word of God will get you out of that valley. Yeah. The word of God will get you over that mountain. Just use the word of God. Right. The shepherds were excited to see Jesus, but they heard the words yeah. from the angels yeah. saying, He will bring great joy to the world. This joy I have, the world did not give it, yeah. and the world can't take it away from That's us. Right. There's nothing like Jesus' joy. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's right. The little joy, the, 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 the joy of the Lord is our salvation. Right. He gives peace in his joy. Yeah. He gives grace and mercy in his joy. 
He gives love and compassion in his joy. Does anybody need Jesus' joy on today? Does anybody want Jesus' joy on today? Does anybody need Jesus' joy on today? Let's be in a hurry. When I think about Jesus, I get joy, joy down in my soul. I like that song. I can't sing it. But I love that song. I get joy in my soul when I think about Jesus. Right. Let's be in a hurry to see Jesus. Let's be in a hurry to hear Jesus. And lastly, let's be in a hurry to tell about Jesus. Yes. Tell about Jesus. In verse 17 and 18, it reads, When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about the child. Verse 18 says, And when all who had heard were amazed at what the shepherd has told them. They were amazed because the shepherds had told them about what they heard. They hadn't seen it themselves, but they was amazed because of what they told them. Just think about that. When someone tells you of an account, when someone tells you their testimony and you get blessed back, and you get happy, you get excited, you get enthused back, because of what the Lord has done for them or what the Lord has said to them. We get, that's amazement in itself. Yes. That's not the Lord just necessarily tapping you on the shoulder, but that's the Lord using someone else to tell you about his goodness and his mercy. All right. yes. The shepherds could not keep this great joy to themselves. And let me say, child of God, whenever the Lord has blessed you, when the Lord has made ways out of no way, right. when the Lord has touched you or touched your family, you ought to be about spreading Jesus' joy. Right. Spread his joy. They were in the presence of God. They saw the angels. They saw the heavenly hosts. But when they saw Jesus, something happened when they saw Jesus. All right. They saw Mary. They saw Joseph. They saw the angels. But something happened when they saw Jesus. All right. And when we have an encounter with Jesus, you just can't keep it to yourself. Right. Jeremiah was saying like this. It was like fire right. shut up in my body. Right. I just couldn't keep it yeah. to myself. Has the Lord been good to anybody in today? Right. Has the Lord paid anybody's bills today? Right. Has the Lord saved someone's soul today? Right. Has the Lord healed someone's body today? Right. Has the Lord kept you? Has the Lord kept
Heavenly Father, and once again, your humble servants come before you, Heavenly Father. First of all, thank you for this year. This has been a horrible year for most of us, Heavenly Father. Dealing with a pandemic that we know not of, the Lord has kept us in spite of this virus. Heavenly Father, we are still behind this sacred desk. 52 weeks out of the year, Heavenly Father. May I preach your gospel, Heavenly Father. For that, I say thank you. Thank you. Lord, if we praise your name for keeping our families, we praise your name for keeping us even in the midst of our sinful nature. You still kept us. Lord, uh, we thank you for the ways that you made and the doors that you opened, but we thank you for your darling son, Jesus the Christ. To make all of this possible, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for this special day called Christmas. A day that I would like to say Christ must. We must be about Christ. So, Lord, we honor you on today. We say happy birthday to you. For you came down through 42 generations, over 2,000 years ago. You laid on a cross for us old wooden cross. They put nails in your hand. They put nails in your feet. A crown of thorns on your head. You had to go to that cross so that we could have salvation. So that we could be delivered from our sins. And for that we say thank you. Now Lord, we ask a special blessing uh, for this coming year, Heavenly Father, that you would touch each and every person individually as well as collectively. Lord, that you go from heart to heart and verse to verse, that you will bless us in a special way. Lord, that we will draw closer to thee. That we be about serving you more, even the better. That we will be about serving one another, the better. That we will be about telling somebody about a man named Jesus. That we be about spreading your word, spreading your gospel, and spreading your love. Lord, we ask that forgiveness of sins, of omission, and prohibition. We ask that you will wipe them as, as white as snow, Heavenly Father. That you would throw them as far as the east is from the west. Lord, we ask that you would touch those who are sick among us. We ask that you would touch those who are bereaved among us. We ask that you would touch those that are out of the office safety, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would have thine own way in our house in our homes, on our jobs, in our cars, Heavenly Father, and even with our friends. Lord, if it's something that we need to try to get away from, Heavenly Father, something that is not of your will, Heavenly Father, give us the strength and the prayers to get away from it. Whatever it is, or whoever it is, or whatever it may be, Heavenly Father, touch us. Give us a clarity of mind, Heavenly Father, that we may do your will, your work, and your way. Heavenly Father, we are ever careful to give your name, honor, praise, and glory for doing this. We thank you. We honor you. We give your name glory. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and we thank you. And every house say amen. 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 And elevate your right hand. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our hearts have heard. We ask that you bless this day in a special way. Bless each and every family in a special way. Be with us on this special day. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the presence of his glory and receive the joy. To your own wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let us all sing. Gifts in your car. Enjoy the rest of the day. Hey, hey, don't go, go, go.